there's almost like an instant gratification that comes when Absolutely. you're able to get these things now or quickly or in a week yeah. or whatever and actually gaining financial security or stability takes a while it does you know Absolutely. like it's not it's something that you build and takes time and you get that gratification and good high feeling in a longer term so yeah. I feel like not many people are willing to do that or don't even, you know what I mean? Don't know. And how much is that Taurus energy? Yes. You know what so I mean? So much of it. Taurus moves very slowly. Real wealth is mm -hmm. built very slowly. Yes. But how many people win the lottery and they become broke? Or, you know what I mean? They unalive themselves. Or they, you know what I mean? They just run through it. Yeah. And that's because it came so quickly. Easy mm -hmm. come, easy go. I've always believed that. Like, you need to teach yourself yeah. these habits. What's poppin'? Hi. Hi. Well, welcome on this fine Tuesday. This fine Tuesday. Like, when have you guys? Guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bet you weren't expecting us. <laughs> um, I don't even know. <laughs> it's, it's it's been rough, y'all. I mean, I feel like we said that we've been <laughs> saying, saying that. that, you know, but it just has been rough, like I mean, consistently. It hasn't lit lightened up yeah lightened no no up. no no it hasn't lightened lightened, it hasn't lightened up at all <laughs> um no for real but we're here and that's all that matters is that yes no matter what day you get us we will be here yes you know what i mean yes and i was telling maya one of the best fucking responses we ever got so you know maya posted um last week on our instagram if you don't follow us on instagram <laughs> what's Do you that. doing we won't link it here <laughs> updates funny content just mm -hmm. we just have a good time yes um, she posted, oh, like, you know, we're going to be posting this video later. And mm -hmm. then she also asked you guys, you know, what day do you guys prefer to have the podcast? Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like sometimes when we don't post on our regular Friday, it still does really well on other days. So we yeah. were just wondering. Yeah. If you had a preference. Yeah. So people were voting. And then one of you, shout out to you, <laughs> <laughs> um, she DM'd us and she was like, you know, I kind of like it when it's a different day every time. It's like a little surprise. I don't know when it's going to come. And I'm just like, you have no idea how much this means to me. Yes. Because I personally don't think that we have the type of audience that would be judgmental. Yeah. And would, I don't know, just be mean to us in any sort of way when we are, when they know we're trying our best. Yeah. Um, and if we do, maybe you don't belong here because all we do is preach about Seriously. being honest with yourself in mm -hmm. terms of like, you know, needing rest yes. and taking it easy. Yes, and knowing your limits and your, to your boundaries. Body. Yeah, yes. exactly. So if we're preaching that and our audience isn't about that, then I feel like there's some sort there's of a disconnect. miscommunication <laughs> <Yes>. there. <laughs> but anyway, I just have to give a shout out to that girl because she made my day that day because you know, creator guilt is a very real thing. So real. Um, and I want you guys to know that we try our best and we have a whole other job and, you know, I don't have to go into it. Even people who aren't creators, you guys know, like, sometimes when your personal life is going through it, work, you're not at your best or vice yeah. versa. And, you know, shit just happens. Yeah. But just know that, like, consistently we will be here and we will create videos weekly for you. Right. Yes, we're always going to try and come at least once a week, but we also have to understand our energies. We mm -hmm. have partners. We have full-time jobs. You know what I mean? We have other hobbies and things outside of this as well. And so I'm always so grateful of Sarah as a business partner as well that she's so understanding when sometimes I'm not feeling well, right, and she's feeling up for it and vice versa. Like, yeah. We're, we're not just always going to be... Exactly. We're not always going to be matching, and I just always appreciate you for that, and I mm. appreciate y'all for being understanding of us as well, too, because, you know, life's hard out here. Life is hard <laughs> out here, and I feel like, you know, in terms of energy, I think energy is contagious, mm -hmm. and, like, I never want to hop on here and have negative energy or just be in a weird space with, you know, my own shit and then project that onto you or Maya. Yeah. Because that's not fair to you or my audience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want to be here when we're feeling it. Yeah. So when you watch this and you finish watching this, you get some of the, that energy that we were giving out and yes. you feel better. Yes. You know? We don't want to be those draining friends. Oh, God, well, You know no. what I mean? We want to be the positive friends where after you come hang out with us, you're like, ah, I feel good. Like, yeah. I feel like I can go do some more shit if I want to. Right. Or maybe I understand myself better and I want to be alone. Yeah. Whatever it is. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be those toxic friends where you're like, oh, I'm drained after this. Right, like, you know? what the fuck happened? And sometimes I genuinely feel like you would be if I came on here with my 
energy of the time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then they would probably write a comment, and then that would just trigger me. Right. And be like, no, you are so right. I am not okay, but how dare you tell me about me? Right. <laughs> right. No, dead ass. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's up? Mm-hmm. We're in Gemini season. Yes. Hello. Thank God. You and Maya were just talking Hello, about there. the fact that, you know, we're sad about how tourist season went. Tourist season. You know, it's all about luxury and self-care and mm-hmm. just kind of doing the least. Yes. <laughs> but tour season was doing the most because of, um, you know, Mercury retrograde, eclipse season, all mm-hmm. that shit. Um, it was a lot, but we are here and I'm glad we made it through. And I just, I'm excited for Gemini season. I yes. want things to feel a little bit more light, a little I'm bit more light. joyous. You know what I mean? <laughs> like shit don't got to be too serious. For real, yeah. No, this was probably the saddest, most hardworking tourist season I've ever had. And I was very annoyed about that because, you know, to me, tourist season, I like to do the least and receive the max. Mm -hmm. Not not have to do the max and receive the least, (laughs) you know, which is what I felt like I was getting. Yeah. All tourist season. Work smarter, not harder, but I was working harder and feeling more dumb. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Also, yeah, I feel like sometimes when I work hard, actually all the times when I work really hard, I'm just like, I'm just a slave to capitalism. like, <laughs> And that makes me more sad, yeah. you know? But then I'm like, I kind of got to get over it because, you know, I got to pay my bills. But it's just a vicious cycle Yeah, that you can be in. No, I, absolutely, absolutely. I think we're all... We're all feeling it. Yes. <laughs> but happy Gemini season. Happy, happy Gemini birthday to all of our season. Geminis out there. We hope it's more fun. Yeah. No, yeah. I think Gemini season to me, I love it. It's my moon sign season. So generally, I feel happier. Yeah. Um, some years, I feel like I've been triggered during Gemini season if I wasn't emotionally in a good place with myself. You know, it's your moon sign season. So I feel like if you're going through it emotionally and your moon sign season pops up, you're going to feel a little bit feel a little sketchy, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I don't know where my emotions are going to take me. (laughs) True. But generally, I feel like going into this Gemini season, my emotions, I feel like I'm feeling them. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to run away from them. So, like, I'm not looking for any surprises in terms of how I feel. I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like everyone should also celebrate, um, like, a half birthday, even though it's not really a half birthday, during their moon sign. For season. sure. I feel like yeah. that would be really cute. Like, you get all your friends together, and it's like, this is my moon sign birthday party. Yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> just as much of a celebration as your sun sign. Yeah. So is your rising sign. All of it. Venus, Mars, whatever the fuck. Yes. Speaking of that, I'm also having my Mars return. Happy hey. Leo Mars. I hope you guys are feeling sexy and fine. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. mm, because that's mm. that Leo Mars energy. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Be that main character, honey. Exactly. Don't be afraid to stand out. No. And speak your mind, too. Because yeah. that's the other thing about Just it, too. Just be fierce. You know? Be Stand you. in your truth. Mm-hmm. <gasps> okay. So I saw some very, what I found to be exciting news uh-huh. <laughs> this morning so you know tia maori apparently she got a new boyfriend but he not so much of a new boyfriend he more of like an old boyfriend because do you remember the movie 17 again no oh. look i i know it but i don't rem- know it enough to like remember the characters or anything like that okay well if like, any I know of the she was, yeah. okay well if anyone watched it and remember she's dating the guy that she was dating from that movie and I just think that is so cute when people from like their childhood like especially in media Mm -hmm. come back together like in their adult life I just think it's cute whenever people come back together yeah I think honestly it means that maybe you're meant to be or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's, like, the exes that get back together, and you're like, ooh, no. You know what I mean? That was a right. house on fire. No. Like, do not do that again. No. But then there's the <laughs> ones that, like, you could tell that it was never toxic. Right. They just kind of separated. Mm-hmm. You know, life took them to different places. And somehow, life brought them back together. Right. You're like, well, I'll be damned. Right. Like, that's cute. That's adorable. Yes. I love that. I know. Especially because of everything she's 
seemed to have gone through yes. with her fucking ex. Oh my gosh. And I saw him like kind of talking shit about her. Shit about just her. Shut and up. just being like shady and acting like he wants her back even though he's taking no. her to court for like money. I can't. Cause he's just a Don't they have kids together? They do. See, okay, it is one thing to talk shit on your ex <laughs> because they're your ex. Um, but when you have kids together, there should be more respect. Yes. Um, and you should be able to control yourself as much as you want to share the narrative with the world and make the other person look bad. Right. At the end of the day, you have to realize that your kids at some point in their life are going to be able to read what you said right. and how you are acting towards their mother or father. So like, I just, I hate that. Mm -hmm. And I want people to have more self-control for the sake of their kids. And some of these people, I feel like they get divorced and they act like they're 13, 14, yes. 15 going through a breakup. And it's like, are you an adult? Like, can right. you control yourself? Or, you know what I mean? Like, yes. what is wrong with you? Do you not have a support system where you, you know, because I feel like if you had a support system, you wouldn't feel so inclined to go out there to the world and, like, to the media and yeah. say all this, like, crazy shit about your ex. And I'm not just talking about him, but just people in general. Yeah. Especially people in Hollywood. They go crazy. I'm like, you don't have a best friend you could talk to about this? Right. Like, why are you, like, talking to TMZ? <laughs> <laughs> Or venting on social media, like oh, you are so right. Come on, y'all. The, the notes app, the notes app, screenshot. Yes, please. Or please, just record yourself on a vi on your own camera. You don't have to post it nowhere. No. You know what I mean? Like, no, you please. Don't. And watch it the next day and yes. see how you feel about yes. that. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's insane to me. It like, really it's is. one of my favorite memes. That's like, I am happy to say that no matter how down bad I was, I never posted a picture of my notes app on Snapchat or Instagram <laughs> story <laughs> anywhere. And I'm like, yes, that is truly a win because some yes. people be doing the most. Right. And exposing themselves. Yeah. And, and I'm like, them. I didn't even know you were going through this, but now I do. Yeah. And I can also read in between the lines. The people that be posting the stupid memes constantly on their fucking story, not an actual meme, just stupid, like, sentences. Yeah. If I don't get what I want, you best believe I'm going to go somewhere else. Like, you know, you're right. like, shit like that. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. Like, you sound like you're going through some shit. And I feel for you, but, like, this is not the way. No, it's not. Because I feel like they want people to be like, are you okay? Yes. Like, that's not the way to do it. They're fishing for compliments and attention and probably sympathy. in that moment. Yeah. And some some famous people are gross and will take advantage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, normal people are gross, too, because they also just want oh, sympathy yeah, and, you know, sure. will take advantage of people like that. But I feel like celebrities are kind of extra gross because they know the power that they yeah. are yielding because they are famous. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. In addition to maybe their oh for sure temptress ways, <laughs> and even like the last bit I was talking about, I was mostly talking about normal people. Yeah, like I follow normal people that do shit like this, and I'm just like, whoa, are you good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. No, they're not. No, but this is not the way. No, this is definitely not. And I would probably have more to say to you <laughs> if you like were like, hey, I'm going through this, like. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I, I'm gonna just gonna skip on over that story. Yeah, you don't. You're not trying to have meaningful conversation about it. You just want to. You do want to speak also, into the abyss. Maybe I'm not even their target <laughs> audience. They're yeah. posting that shit for the person that they're involved with to look at that. To and be look like, at Damn, it. right? He really don't care. Damn, she really don't care. <laughs> it's like they don't care. No, that person's probably not even looking at your story. Gosh. Yeah. Oh man. It's sad. It is sad. Been there. But done fuck that. Them. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't recommend doing it. No. <laughs> but you're probably going to do it because everyone needs to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're like three days into the new moon and Taurus energy. Mm -hmm. And I love Taurus new moons because I feel like it's just a great opportunity to set yourself up for financial success security and just feeling very very abundant in your life and feeling safe with what you have and who mm. you are you know mm -hmm. so I feel like if it's any time to do some sort of like manifestation ritual or to you know bring in the energy that you want into your life it's Taurus new moon mm -hmm. um, and we just had one last Friday and I feel like I want to talk about because I think it's something that's very interesting to a lot of people is people's relationship with money and I don't think it's something that's talked about often because mm -hmm. money makes people feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, which is crazy because if you read anything, if you read any book, 
rich people talk about money constantly. Um, and they really don't see the point of being hush hush about it. Yeah. It's really the people that have the worst relationship with money that feel uncomfortable talking about money, mm -hmm. you know? And I think as a society, we know what our government wants. They don't want us to be wealthy. They don't want us to get what we deserve. And you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they want to keep the rich rich. Um, so it's ultimately up to you to figure out how you can change your relationship with money. And I want everyone to, you know, start that journey whenever they feel comfortable to do so. Yeah. You know, and I feel like one of the best things that I learned is to teach myself that I deserve financial success. I deserve to feel safe with within myself. Like, even if it's not monetary, I feel grounded, you know? And once you feel grounded, that is when you can actually build wealth. Mm -hmm. I genuinely feel like. So if you guys are someone that feels like, oh my God, you know, maybe like me, my family didn't grow up with a lot, but I don't want to talk about money because it still makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, I just want to get rich. Like, I just don't want to be where my family was growing up. I want to get rich. And like, there's a gap there. Mm -hmm. You being uncomfortable with where you came from and then you just wanting to be the opposite and be rich, like where is the gap? You need to deal with, with these things. You need to deal with the fact that, okay, yeah, money makes me feel uncomfortable. It's scary to think about not having enough money. Mm -hmm. How can I change that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I feel like you have to, it starts to me with defining what is your foundation of financial security, mm -hmm. you know, and that's actually going to differ for a lot of people. And you shouldn't base it off of what you see on Instagram, despite what that may be what you want to do, right? Yeah. Like you see all of these people who are filthy rich, but like, let's be real because of the government and how a lot of things are set up. We're not going to be, most of us are not going to be that filthy rich. So how can you live a comfortable, wealthy life? within that right with within your means like what is wealthy and financially stable to you within your salary grounds right mm -hmm. and I feel like that does really start with like what are you spending your money on <laughs> I feel like a lot of people aren't even willing to say hey I, I feel like we talked about this earlier too hey I spend a bunch of money on clothes because that's a coping mechanism yeah for me right no I, absolutely and you have to figure that stuff out because we, you'll see sometimes too that um, we have unhealthy habits that are tied to our finances, and it makes a whole a whole you. Uh, absolutely, and I spoke to Maya about this too. You know, I always have breakthroughs about my relationship with money, just like I have breakthroughs when it comes to any sort of trauma I have in my life. And I had this breakthrough of like, wow, like I sometimes do overspend because subconsciously. I feel like I am kind of self-sabotaging in terms of building my wealth. Mm. You know what I mean? Like when you keep buying things here and there and you're like, oh, like I feel so good. I have so many things. Yeah. I feel so good. Any of those things can be taken from you. Mm -hmm. You having, you know, a good savings account or, you know, yeah. a, being a homeowner, whatever that means to you, being financially successful and safe. You having those things, that's what's ultimately ultimately going to make you feel good, not you just having all these random things. Yeah. And that's something that I learned that a lot of people actually do. They buy this, buy that, because subconsciously they're kind of sabotaging themselves from having real wealth. Yeah. You're kind of throwing your money away. Mm. And that was honestly such a big realization for me. Um, and, you know, I feel like I learned a lot when Saturn was transiting my second house of finances and, you know, just in terms of like how I value myself, you know, money, all these things. Cause Saturn teaches you how to be responsible. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Saturn teaches you how to have boundaries. So I feel like, you know, you can really look into your relationship with money. Also, you know, what sign is in your second house? Check out that sign. Do you have any planets there? Mm -hmm. See what's going on in your second house. And I feel like astrology is again, another way for you to see things that you never saw before. Yeah. When it comes to your relationship with money. Yes. How you value yourself. What is it that you value? How you can make money. All those things are so important. Mm -hmm. Another thing, back to kind of what you're saying of how, you know, you would like buy things because it felt like that was bringing financial security to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like another part of it too, which I also resonate and heard, was that there's almost like an instant gratification that comes when Absolutely. you're able to get these things 
now or quickly or in a week yeah. or whatever. And actually gaining financial security or stability takes a while. It does. You know, Absolutely. like it's not, it's something that you build and takes time. And you get that gratification and good high feeling in a longer term. So yeah. I feel like not many people are willing to do that or don't even, you know what I mean? Don't know. And how much is that Taurus energy? Yes. You know what so I mean? So much of it. Taurus moves very slowly. Real wealth is mm -hmm. built very slowly. Yes. But how many people win the lottery and they become broke or, you know what I mean? They unalive themselves or they, you know what I mean? They just run through it. Yeah. And that's because it came so quickly. Easy mm -hmm. come, easy go. I've always believed that. Like you need to teach yourself yeah. these habits. And it doesn't come from, it doesn't come like overnight and you could all of a sudden, you know, get a huge raise. I can almost bet you're going to feel inclined to spend more because you have this new raise. Yeah. And you're going to have the same amount of money left in your bank account every month right. than you did before this raise because you feel like you can spend more now. Right. When really you should be saving more. Yes. Um, that's also important. And I feel like I want people to... Um, check out this guy named Ramit Sethi. Um, his new um, show, on show on Netflix came out. But before, so I know him from before from reading his book. It's called I Will Teach You How to Be Rich. Mm. Um, and it's so good. Like, I got it before the pandemic started because he was on one of my favorite podcasts, Girls Gotta Eat. And his book is so good. And I'm so happy he's blowing up yeah um on netflix like his book is amazing and if you don't want to read check out the netflix documentary but he just has so many so many amazing tools to help you you know see yourself when it comes to your financial habits like how do you and money work together yeah what is your relationship like with money and it's not just like these rules of like spend less do that like he's going to teach you how to do things that work for you yeah depending on what it is that you want to splurge on and what you may not want to splurge on and that's how you could save more money right because all of us have different priorities too you know yeah. what i mean like i love to travel so i want to spend a good portion of my budget on traveling right you know but that means i may not be going to concerts as much right mm -hmm. and maybe sarah loves going to concerts but she doesn't want to travel as much mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. right Financial security and what I want to do looks different from person to yep. person. So don't be asking other people <laughs> yeah. either. You know, like, like it really should come from you, from within. Because that's what's going to make you happier too. If you follow someone else's guidelines and you're still not happy, well, that's because you're doing what makes them happy. Yeah. That doesn't say anything about you and what you actually value, what you actually want at the end of this life. Yeah. Um, some people, maybe they don't want that big house. Yeah. Maybe at the end of their life, they want to have traveled the whole world. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone wants to have a home that they built a family in that they're retiring in. So it really right. just varies. And I want to kind of end this conversation with this amazing TikTok that I saw. And I can't freaking find it. So I can't give her credit. But if you know who it is, link them down below. Um, this girl was basically talking about how she learned that you can do yourself a favor and instead of saying, I can't afford this, um, start saying, how can I afford this? Mm -hmm. And by doing this, because by the power of manifestation, if you believe in it, which I do, um, it gives the universe the space. I feel like I, I interpreted it as it gives the universe the space and freedom to get creative for you when it comes to you getting what you want, mm -hmm. um, even if it seems impossible. Because I feel like sometimes we're like, you know what, I really want that thing, but like, yeah, I can't afford that. Like, it's not happening. Well, yeah. you already decided. The universe said, okay, well, you're not going to get it because you said you can't afford it. Yeah. But if you change your wording, which, you guys, your verbiage matters so much when it comes to manifesting and getting what you want in life. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be more positive in terms of how you express yourself. So if you were to just say, how can I afford this? It's like an open-ended question. The universe will surprise you and show you how you can. Mm -hmm. And some money will randomly just drop on your lap. Or, right. or you'll get a promotion. Or yeah. Whatever or you get to it go may for be. free. Whatever. Exactly. Like, and then you, you get what you want. The thing that you said, hmm, how can I afford this? Yes. So I thought that was really cool. And ever since I watched that TikTok, that's how I've been trying to, to do it. And also for a long time now, I never say the words. I'm broke. Yeah. Please don't ever say that. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel like maybe you don't have as much money as you as you should be having, don't say those words because that that makes you broke. Yes. You know what I mean? That's your reality. You mm -hmm. said it, therefore it is true. So 
be be mindful of how you express yourself. Yes. Your words create help create your reality and this reality that we're experiencing. So that's why you have to be really careful with what you say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be careful of what comes after the phrase I am. That's the easiest place to start. Every time you say I am, be careful about what comes afterwards because you're manifesting that. Yeah. Facts. Mm. Mm-hmm. A word. A word. By Pastor Sarah today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't remember if we talked about the writer's strike. I feel like we did a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I found out some very interesting facts Ooh, okay. about the writer's strike that happened back in like 2000, 2008 when we were youngins. That Wait. completely changed. The writer's strike happened also around the same time as the recession? Yeah. That we're currently in right now? Uh-huh. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Creepy parallels, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of the interesting things that I learned came, that came out of um, the writer's strike in 2007, 2008. Um, one, so remember we used to have like hella episodes, like 22 to like 30 episodes. Oh, I always talk about that. Yes. I love old shows and having like 22 episodes per season. There would be a mid-season. Like- right. So... Because the writers went on strike and they were short on writers, all of the studios and stuff cut the seasons. So now that's why we still have only 8 to 10 or 12 episodes usually max. So after that is when we always had shorter seasons. And then the other really interesting fact that I learned was that – it brought rise to reality television because none of it had to be as scripted, you know? Wow. So it was a huge shift in TV culture mm-hmm. Production. that still, you know what I mean, affects us like greatly today. Yeah. So I'm really kind of scared but also interested to see what is going to come out of the strike. Hopefully they get everything that they're asking for and it's like I also nothing, saw that but. all they wanted was like a 3% raise. Yeah. It just You can't give them a 3%? They right. are not asking for much. Right. Like, that is insane. Yeah. They just want fair contracts. It's actually fucking crazy. Like, I hate it. Right. With how much money these studios are making off of these writers? You know what I mean? Because I don't know. If the script is trash. I feel like the downfall of Hollywood is coming real quick. Yeah. Real it very much feels quick. that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that there are a lot more, like, actors and actresses, like, speaking up yeah, as I, well, too. For real. Saying the bad stuff that happened to them and the things that they experienced in the yeah, industry. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Like, it's not as taboo anymore. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely not as taboo anymore. And we talk about all the, you know, negative qualities or negative aspects of social media. I think one of the positive ones is that celebrities and people just in general get to speak out on – the wrongdoings of their work environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they have a platform to actually tell people what's going on. Whereas before it was so hush hush. And what are you going to do? Go to a tabloid? Like they can easily easily spin that and make you look bad. So when it comes from your own mouth and it's a story that can blow up, you know, I feel like Hollywood is more inclined to take accountability for how they're treating their writers, actors, talent, mm-hmm. their production companies, like everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I I hope, like I said, the writers get what they are striking for and then some. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, as someone who I would consider watching TV one of my hobbies. Yeah. Because I love reality shows. Like, I love just dissecting the behavior of people and understanding different types of people. Like that is what makes reality TV so cool to me Mm -hmm. is really, really watching the interpersonal relationships between people and how dynamics change and why it changes or even just fictional shows. Like I, I love watching those with my boyfriend. Like it's one of our hobbies together Mm -hmm. and it just makes me think about like, I wouldn't have those if it wasn't for the writers, if it wasn't for the production companies for Mm -hmm. reality shows, like, I appreciate them so much. Like, yeah. They're the reason I'm entertained all the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they fucking deserve everything they want and more. Yes. They're super talented. They they really are. They create whole universes and worlds and new spaces for us to yeah. bond and connect and yeah. laugh and cry, you know? And, like, 
that the is theater. exactly <laughs> that is part of the human experience you mm-hmm. know what i mean and they are the facilitators of that i i respect writers so so much and we haven't started experiencing the negative effects of them of them not writing yet but we will soon and so i hope with that we start to see more people on social media again speaking out for the writers and trying yeah. to bring more attention to it i agree um I because agree. TV's gonna fucking suck. <laughs> if, yeah. If we don't, if they don't, you know what I mean. If they don't get what I mean, what uh, have you ever watched a fucking movie with less than fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes? <laughs> that shit feels like fucking nails on a chalkboard. It's terrible. It's terrible. I need talent. Right. Don't do this to us, okay? As a collective, no, we real. need to come together. I know everyone loves watching television and movies, so please. Yeah. Put some respect on these writers' names. Pay them. Right. Pay up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the wrongdoings of this world, mm-hmm. I saw this post, and it's not new, but it's fairly new in the sense, like, it, you know, within the past three years, you know, 2021 pandemic. And it said, these are two um, articles. The first one says, workers lost $3.7 trillion in earnings during the pandemic. Women and Gen Z saw the biggest losses. Mm. And then right after, this is like, yeah, literally, a day after, actually, this came out. World's billionaires get richer by $3.9 trillion during the pandemic. <gasps> well, ain't that some shit? That sounds real similar. That sounds numbers. like it should have been in one article talking about how we're getting fucked by the rich. Right. Like, because I put two and two together, and it's four. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah. But also... Not surprising because I am actually feeling it in my wallet how everything is more expensive right now. Like going grocery (laughs) shopping, getting tennis shoes, getting like literally basic things. it's crazy. It's so ridiculous and it's frustrating because, again, the top 1-2% hold majority of the money. We don't actually have a middle class, you know, and we need to. They want you to think that you do. Right. But, it doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, it does not exist. And they're just living their best fucking life. Right. And I need more of them to go to prison. Seriously. I, I do. Crimes um, against humanity. Come, uh, <laughs> sh- yes, but I just know they're doing grimy shit on the low. Other fucking grimy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. You think these fucking trillionaires, these top dogs ain't doing some crazy uh, pedophilic yeah, some fucking sicko shit. Yeah. Some they're the ones, weirdo they're the ones that, shit. But they're running like half of fucking, half of the government. I think half of the government is trifling, shady ass people. Yeah. And the other half actually cares for the people. Yeah. And I'm not actually dividing it by <laughs> Republican and Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is corrupt people in both parties. Mm-hmm. Um, and we need to get them out. Yeah. Truly, because it's fucked up. It's so fucked up. Yeah. They ain't working. I mean, like, they don't have our best interests at heart, obviously, because they they're trying to <laughs> sell us products. Mm-hmm. But it's just frustrating that the government is in their pocket, too, because we elected them to protect us, and they don't do that. They're like, ha ha. They, they both point and laugh at us, like, ha ha, we're going to steal your money. You dumb beasy. I get so you know? angry when I think about this <laughs> shit because it's it's so sad. It's it's really so sad. It is because they don't have to do all that. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. But it's they wild. do. They do. Because they hate us. They do. They do. And I feel like it all just comes back to control. Yeah. You know? Like, that's why everything, everything that we have here can be taken away so quickly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they want you to live in fear that it can be taken. Like, you need to be stressing thinking about keeping your job. You should feel lucky that you're paying for health care. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they almost make you feel <laughs> so grateful for having the bare minimum. You know? And I think that's why it's so sick. And it's yes. Like, why am I grateful for having the bare fucking minimum? Like, this is what I deserve as a human. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's annoying because it feels like they're like dangling this carrot and we keep walking further trying to like you yeah. know nab the carrot. The carrot being the American dream. Yeah, and it's never actually within our grasp at all. No, it's not. But you just keep making me work. I just had thinking. a really I had a really sick thought. 
like, like it's, that should be like a little cartoon of us like following the <laughs> carrot. Oh, I got it. And then you fall into your grave. Oh my God. That would be good. Because it's true. I got it. <laughs> oh, you died. <laughs> Too late. You figured it out. That would be a good little commercial. Yeah, it would. Sick of being fucked by the government? <laughs> Tired of fucking crazy hours? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Man. I wouldn't be surprised that at some point, like, it gets so crazy here, especially in America, where they finally do admit, yes, aliens exist. Uh-huh. And <laughs> instead of just, you know, having normal jobs for everyone, they're like, if you want to make an extra buck... Just sign up to be tested on by aliens. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think it could happen. I think they would. I could definitely see that happening. I mean, why not? Yeah. And people would do it. They would. Many people would. Yeah. Damn. You want to know why? Because they can't afford to live. <laughs> no, 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 no. And whose fault is that? The government. Right. <laughs> And who's giving? Sick. Who's getting eighty percent of the money the aliens are giving for your testing? The government. Mm-hmm. You get twenty percent. Right. Because that's Fuckery. what the contract says. Right. <laughs> Always just <laughs> fucking us. Oh my god. Okay, so I have a life update for the people. My already knows. I quit processed sugar, and it has been a journey. Well, it's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> So really, I'm quitting right before me and Maya. If you didn't know, we're going to Italy. Yeah. Ah, we so deserve this vacation. It's going to be so great. It's going to be great. So I'm quitting that um, before we go to Italy. And then obviously in Italy, I'm going to have, I'm sure their dessert is much better than the ones we have in America. Yeah. But when we come back, I'm still going to be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And y'all, it is hard, I will say. I never thought it would be easy. But the first three days, I was fine. And then the fucking fourth day, I was like, damn. Just reach into that fucking drawer and grab a chocolate. Like, every, every like, freaking, like, <laughs> ten minutes. And then I was, like, I woke up and I had, like, fatigue. And I felt just, like, so tired. I didn't have energy. I'm, like, damn, like, I feel like shit. Like, I want to feel happy. Mm. I don't know what it was. Granted, I was also getting my period, but I swear it was worse. And I think it was because of the sugar withdrawals. Yeah. And one of my best friends, you know, she's so right. She's, like, it's as addicting as cocaine and I'm like you are so right I know I mean I've heard that before it is but it's it's crazy how it is like literally one of the number one addictions in the world yeah especially in America there's added sugar everywhere oh my god yeah so bad and it's like not good not even good sugar it's overly processed high fructose corn syrup shit you know like it's not just like regular sugar it's it's not like everything like things that I wouldn't have even thought I'm like okay well I'm not having candy I'm not having I was never a soda person, but I, yeah, I wasn't having, I'm not having chocolate. I go and I check some of my bars, even the healthy ones. I'm like, damn, I got to get rid of you too. Cause you know, they got added sugar in the back. Yeah, It's crazy. You just got to read the label. So that's what I've been doing. And I feel better now. I feel like after like the third or fourth day, like it's a little easier, but I will say I have moments where I'm like, I just want some chocolate. Give me that chocolate. No, legit. I mean, it's a dopamine hit every time you have sugar. Yeah, especially with chocolate, too. You know, like something goes off in our little brains. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm here. I'm doing the damn thing. It ain't easy, but I am proud of myself. And I'm really excited to um, be on this journey of self-discipline. Yeah. I don't think I could ever do that. I applaud you. I don't think I could ever do that especially since getting with my new um, boyfriend. I mean, not new. We've been together for four years. <laughs> they just Let's say. went on their first date the yeah, other day. Yeah, just <laughs> my new. Yeah. But new to me because he was always such a big sweets person. Yeah. And I was always like a salty girl. Literally, when I went to the dentist, they could they would look at my teeth and say, oh, you don't eat sugar, huh? Like, you don't have candy, yeah. huh? And I was like, nope, sure don't. And ever since I got with him, he turned me into a sweets person and you know every night now I'm like I need a little sweet I need a little <laughs> literally chocolate. yes and it's the worst oh it's on, for sure I, and I know it is an addiction now yeah and I hate it's such that an I addiction. have I hate that I have this I know I am the same my boyfriend's I I'm a chip girl at heart and I will still be a chip girl but mm-hmm. he just so happens to add <laughs> sweets to that 
<laughs> and also, I come from a culture like, oh my god, don't even get me started on visiting so many home. Del- Persian desserts. desserts are so good. My yes. mom is a hoas baker. She's always like, I made this orange meringue. Like, mm-hmm. like, like she is like such a Betty Crocker. Like mm-hmm. she always makes all these yummy like cakes and all this shit. So it's so hard going home. I haven't gone home yet since I started <laughs> She's this. like, have a little cake. Um, no, literally. <laughs> and like my boyfriend loves sweets. And like it's so funny when I told him. He's like, I'll quit it with you. I'm like. You're like, will you now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love him. <laughs> for saying. And, but like, I mean, he did it with me while I was over there all weekend. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, are you sh- like, how do I know you're not going to be eating it when I'm not here? <laughs> And he's like, you have to trust me. I'm like, okay. Like, you're the one that got me hooked. Like, that's like your fucking heroin addict. Like, yeah. fucking friend. Like, no. like, I'll quit with you. <laughs> this is a joke. Don't don't take it too seriously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, someone that, like, got you onto something, <laughs> yeah. you tell them, like, I'm quitting. And they're going to be like, me too. And you're like, well, would you look at that? I'm like, okay, we'll see about them apples. No, literally, literally. <laughs> I did look at him a little sideways, but I think it's really cute that, you yeah. know, because I feel the same way. Like, when he does things, I'm like, yeah, I'll try it with you. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's funny, and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I will say, like, I just, everything has it. I can't even so have my much. cereal anymore. There's added sugar. It's my healthy cereal, too. Yeah. I'm just like, bro. Yeah. Stop it. Someone give me a mic. I want to go on American television and be like, make something else. Put something else in there. I want these things that I love. Yeah. But you keep putting sugar in it. Yeah. Some things don't need sugar. Truly. Find something else. Truly. Get somebody else to do it. Right. I watched this TikTok the other day of this gal, and she was like, you know, ranting, saying, she's like, I just got back from Thailand, and I, she's been back in America for a week, and she's like, and I have been bloated all week. She's like, I eat the same shit that I eat in Thailand, and my stomach has been fucked up. I've had the bubble guts. <laughs> she was like, I'm moving back to Thailand. I don't know what y'all put in this American food, yeah, but it's bad. And literally, I just hear that more and more, and I've always known that, yeah. you know? Our food is not but it's fucking just good. It's not so bad. They put so many preservatives and so much extra shit. We don't um, need. high fructose corn syrup and just just so much shit that it does not need. And you know, even the vegetables mm-hmm. they inject them with those. What is it called? Like the GMO GMOs. and the hormones yeah. to make them fatter. Hormones like we don't like, care if they're even fat. Even like dairy here, it's so different than dairy in other countries. Like yeah. how the cows are being treated. Like it's just it's insane. It's insane. It's yeah. insane. It's insane in the membrane. Yeah. Just another way that they control us. I just want to have my own farm. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to know what's up, um, there are these brothers called the Koch brothers, and they're part of the one percent in this country. And if you just, you know, just Google them and learn about them, and learn about how they will never eat, they or their family will never eat what normal people eat in this country. They chose to have their own farm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wonder why? I wonder why. Right. Google it. Right. You know, that reminds me of, like, all of the top people in, like, social media firms and stuff who Mm -hmm. don't let their kids stay on social media for Mm -hmm. long hours. Oh, that's literally... Isn't that funny? Ain't that funny? Because they're seeing the statistics. They're seeing the numbers. They're seeing what it actually does to humans, Mm -hmm. to their bodies, to their mind. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't want the people they care about to be in that position. Right. (laughs) You other dumb people. Yeah, you. Go ahead. So I learned that there are apparently two new types of love languages. Have you heard about this? No. What are they? Okay. So more to add to my all of the above. Exactly. And I I agreed with I, I like both of them. Okay. So. <laughs> um, Should we tell the people what the five are? Yes. The originals. Yes. Okay. So the original five are words of affirmation, acts of service. Receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the two new ones, um, the first one is shared experiences, which kind of sounds similar to quality time. Yeah. But it's supposed to be focused more on adventuring and expanding yourself with someone. I love that. I love that. So I really liked that. And then the other one is emotional security. So feeling emotionally seen or taken care of. Ugh. 
my water sign ass. Yes. <laughs> I think that might be the one. She said that's the number. I feel like that one and yeah, that one and quality time for me. Like Yeah. I need quality time. Like I don't care that there's other people here. I've been needing just a me and you thing for a while now. And if I feel right. like I haven't had it, I'm gonna I'm gonna be act angry out. and act out and I'm not even going to be available for other people. Yeah. You know, I can be around them, but I'm annoyed that I'm here. Yeah. Um, but the emotionally, the emotional one I love too because oh, I just love feeling emotionally safe. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm so good at creating such a safe space for other people. So I know that that's one of my love, love languages is being in a place where I'm able to express my emotions and that they won't be used against me and that I can just sit there with you and share how I'm feeling and you can validate them or you can ask me questions about them and you know Mm -hmm. it's just like a really safe space for us to talk about our feelings and emotions and good or bad and just really understanding why we're feeling what we're feeling right and some people crave that more in relationships than other people and I get it some people it makes them uncomfortable yes I can they don't want to be seen that way sometimes say like I've had People that I used to talk to before my current relationship that, like, I was dying for that. And they would give me moments where they would share that with me. And Mm -hmm. I would peak during those moments because it's my vibe. I love feelings. They don't scare me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I... I felt like I was neglected when it comes to those those moments. Like, they would only just happen once in a while. And mm. I think it was because they felt uncomfortable sharing deep feelings and talking about their feelings. And, you know, not everyone not everyone had the same childhood, so I, I get it. Um, but I feel like it's important to find people that that are like-minded when it comes to feelings and how often you share your feelings. Yeah. You know, and how deep you go. Definitely. Because some people don't want to go deep. Some people don't. It's it's unfair of me to expect (laughs) everyone to be on the same playing field as me. Some people generally want to keep it light. And I hope they find people that want to keep it light too. Because it's unfair for either either of us to expect the other to open up more or keep it light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I actually saw a couple points that say, you know, this could be you. So I wanted to read through Ooh, those yes. ones because okay. I thought it'd be cute. Yeah. Um, so signs that emotional security could be your love language. Um, you're not afraid of deep conversations. Mm-hmm. You ask a lot of questions to get to the root cause of situations or feelings. Um, friends can call you to talk through issues or feelings because they feel safe with you. <laughs> um, you often ask your partner how they are really feeling about a situation and you enjoy the connection that is formed by getting vulnerable with someone else. Literally everything Sarah just well, said. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Isn't that so wild? Okay, yeah, that's definitely one of mine. Yes, okay. What and then the other one? for signs that shared experiences could be your love language. You enjoy planning a weekend trip or activity with your partner. You're always seeking out new things you can do together. You prefer to get out of the house for a date night rather than stay in. Your favorite memories with your partner involve things you've experienced together and you seek out people who are adventurous or not afraid to try something new i love that yes oh how sweet i'm so glad they added these two right because they they are so different than the other ones they are and they i feel like they're so important those are both really good love languages yes great like people that don't want to go out or experience things if they end up with someone that's just a homebody like they'll feel like they're neglecting a part of themselves and maybe they can't get deeper with someone right it's just crazy because someone that's probably a homebody they're like what do you mean like we're at home we're intimate. having quality but they're time. like uh when we experience things together it makes me see you in a different way and it makes me feel more connected to you yeah 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 that's why i was happy that they said like it is different than quality yeah, time it is you know it because is so different you're so it right. is something different and exciting and yeah. sexy sometimes for people to see them in this new light yeah. or see how you fail or try or whatever yeah. it is, you know? Absolutely. It's exciting. I think it's really exciting. No, this I, is I definitely think, one of mine. I think so. I think yeah. it is. And I I feel like, you know, like I like that you said win or fail because when you see see your partner trying something and the way they react to being good or bad at something. And I say good or bad because (laughs) like someone being bad at something, if they, if it just trickles down to, you know, your whole night being ruined or someone being good at something and they have bad sportsmanship or they're just like really annoying with it. 
those things can teach you a lot about a person. Yeah. So to be able to experience things together and love the way they are when you win or lose together, mm-hmm. I feel like it does build a really, really intimate connection between the two of you. For sure. You know, because it's like fun. Yeah. And it can be unattractive when you know you are ex- excited to go try something and the person you're with is like annoyed the whole time I don't want to do that I'm really yeah. like being a naysayer and convinces you maybe not to go or do oh. something that you're really wanting to do for sure for sure and I feel like I every time I've tried something that I'm not good at because my boyfriend he's really good at like he played sports growing up so he's like really really good at shit like that <laughs> And, like, I I don't know. I feel like I'm not good at, like, anything physical like that. Like, anything mental, I'm winning. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if it's chess, baby, <laughs> let's go. Damn it, he's, he was in the he was really I was in chess, chess, too. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. The I'm so game. great. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, like, I feel like whenever I, we do try things that are, like, let's, like, let's say golf or, like, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. and I'm not good at it. And he knows how I am. I'm a Leo Mars. You know, I hate losing. But he's really good at, like, encouraging me. Like, mm. you can do it. Like, it's okay. Like, yeah. who cares if you're not good at it? Like, yeah. just have fun. And, like, I appreciate that. Mm. You know what I mean? I appreciate that so much more than someone who's just, like, stone cold silent. Like, if I'm trying something or I'm not good at it. Yeah. You know? I need, I need <laughs> those words of affirmation, too, you know? Yeah. Well, During those shared experiences. Yeah. Because <laughs> imagine if he wasn't and it just got all, like, tense. Yeah. Because some, some people, they think they're doing right by you by being quiet yeah by letting you focus me i take that as oh so you don't believe in me i look stupid right now (laughs) you're not not encouraging me you know what i mean yeah so i think shared experiences are so important in a relationship yes even if you don't find that to be your love language Mm -hmm. like your main love language i do think it's important to have those once in a while yeah because how how else to me, I feel like, are you really growing in new spaces? Like, yeah. yes, all these other ones, you can grow one-on-one in the relationship, yeah. which ultimately is what matters most, right? It, it, it is. But it is also really key to make sure that you could go out in the world together. You're oh, not yeah. always just going to be in yeah. the house together. At least I freaking hope not. Well, that's what why the pandemic, it broke up a lot of people. Yeah, Because the people that, that genuinely just wanted to just go out and be around other people, they had to experience their relationship on the opposite side of the spectrum where they're alone and they're just with each other. And if you're not feeling that, then maybe you're not good together. Right. You need both. You do. I, and you know, it's not always 50, 50, maybe Mm -mm. 70, 30, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 60, 40, whatever it may be, but you always need some aspect of both. Yeah. And it will change, you know, through the years that you're together in a relationship as well. Right. Like depending on what you're going through. Exactly. So, you know, be kind and understanding with yourself and with your partner, especially if you're wanting maybe more of a love language than Mm -hmm. you're receiving or you're wanting a different one. Maybe they're really good at giving you words of affirmation, but you don't really need that or you want, you prefer gifts, you know, you prefer acts of service. Right. Don't hesitate to tell somebody how you want to be loved because we all have our ideas of what we think is the best way to love someone, but until you tell us the best way, like, we're always going to be missing. Exactly. You know? Because there's the love language that you that you think you give, and then there's the love language that you know you want. Yes. And the one that I feel like you give, that needs to change depending on who you're with. Correct. Because that's the one that, you know, your other person is receiving. Mm-hmm. You know? So, and yours may change throughout life, yes. too. Yeah. So I feel like um, always check in with yourself. Yeah. The things that used to make me happy, are they making me happy? The things that made my partner happy, are, are they making them happy? Right. And they may not be. So it's time to just have a conversation. We need to have more conversations with our partners and, I mean, friends, everyone. Like, just like we have check-ins at work, we need to have check-ins with our partners and our friends and family, whatever it may be. All of our interpersonal relationships when we're not – Feeling things. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be a fight, and it doesn't always have to be when it gets to a point where you want to separate. Yeah. You, you, you can give them an opportunity to change. Right. You know what I mean? And if you feel like they're not feeling something you've been doing, you can give them an opportunity to have a conversation by saying, hey, I feel like what I used to do, that made you happy. It doesn't make you happy anymore. Like, is there something wrong? Like, can right. we work on this before we prematurely give up? And sometimes you guys don't want to change, and maybe you do have to separate, but... I think it's important to give each other a chance. 100% because, you know, sometimes I think people are like, oh, if I bring this up, like, it it will 
be the start of the end of our relationship, yeah. right? Which but it doesn't scary. necessarily have to be that way. Yeah. It, it all depends on the words you use and how you try and communicate, like, and the energy that you bring into the conversation. You mm -hmm. know, like, if you come in like, hey, you really haven't been showing up in this relationship, yeah. that's not going to go over so well. Mm -hmm. And that may be this, the, the ending or the, break, the start of the breaking yeah. point, you know? But if you say, hey... Um, I haven't been feeling supported in this way. Yeah. Right? Like, how can we fix that? Right. That's a better conversation, I think, to have. Uh, absolutely. What have you been going through? And I mean, you know? the way they and the way they react shows you a lot about how they feel about you mm -hmm. and how much they value you and your relationship. Yeah. If they, you know, if they kind of look at you and laugh or get defensive, then, well, you're not really trying to even understand where I'm coming from. Like, do you care about me? Because I'm telling you, I'm not okay. Do you want to help me fix it? Because I'll go 50-50 with you. Right. Because that's what we do in relationships when we care. Yeah. You know? For real. Yeah. For real. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this podcast episode. Coming to you live on a Tuesday. We Tuesday. appreciate y'all so, so much. We're linking our socials somewhere around here. Make sure you give us a follow. Like Sarah said, we're going through Italy um, in june so follow us on there so you can see what we doing up in italy yeah, okay we're we having a good time we love y'all so, so 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 much. much see you next time bye, bye.